My name is Noah Hansen. Um, I am going to be the camp director this summer at Camp Hunt. Um, this will be my eighth summer working up at um, camp, and I am super excited for this summer. It will actually be my first as a camp director, and I'm very, uh, very excited to experience that with all of you. Um, I guess before we get started, if any of you ever need to contact me with any questions um, or concerns before your um, time up at camp this summer, you, you can contact me um, at my email, nkhansen91 at gmail.com. That's nkhansen, H-A-N-S-E-N, 91 at gmail.com. Um, Okay, so for those of you who have not been to Camp Hunt, um, it's right on the shores of beautiful Bear Lake. It's a great area. Um, we have um, recently updated facilities. Uh, all of our toilets are flushing with hot water showers. Um, we have beautiful views um, in the mornings of the sunrises and of the sunsets in the evenings. Um, a great staff. Uh, and it's located around two miles north of Garden City, about two and a half miles, two and a half hours north um, of Salt Lake City. So we're super excited for you to come up um, and experience that with us. Most of the information that I'm going to go over really quick is going to be on the Leader's Guide. If you don't have the Leader's Guide yet, you can download a copy at utahscouts.org slash hunt. Um, and you scroll to the bottom of the page and it's labeled the 2024 Youth Camp Guide. Um, this page, you can also download physical forms there, other important documents. Um, so please check the leader's guide prior to coming to camp. Again, it will have a lot of the information that I'm gonna share right now. Um, but if I miss anything today, it will be in there. And hopefully I'll, I'm just gonna briefly go over information that's important to know today and um, just make sure to go through that and, and look at everything that you need to know. So for our youth camps, we have two different schedules. Um, we have a, a three-day option and a four-day option. And so whichever option you have, check the schedule in the leader's guide. Um, and please plan on arriving during your scheduled arrival window. It has that on the schedule. Um, and we have that um, so that you have time to get into camp and get your stuff set up, your tents, um, and the, our time is limited, especially on um, Wednesday, we'll have one group coming out, going out, and one group coming in on the same day, and so please make sure that you are planning on leaving and arriving at the allotted time. And immediately upon arrival, when you get to camp, we ask that you send one adult leader up to the lodge um, to check in with medical forms, um, a swim check roster for your group, any final payments that you might have. Um, so your medical forms will be A and B of the BSA medical form, parts A and B. And they're required for all participants, including adults. Um, swim checks are also required for all of our participants to get in the water or to boat, to do anything um, with the lake. And so we ask that you please complete a swim check um, before you arrive at camp. Again, there's more information about that on our website. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. We ask that you do that before you come to camp. But if for some reason that's not a possibility, um, please reach out and we can um, plan on having you do it at camp. We just have minimal time um, to do those swim checks. Um, so for your campsites, each campsite will have two picnic tables, uh, a campfire, a trash can. We ask that you provide your own trash bags, but we do provide a trash can in your campsite. We have restrooms nearby to all of the campsites and the water is potable in all of the spigots um, around camp. So you don't have to worry about that. All of our bathrooms, like I said, have flushing toilets, hot showers, um, depending on the week that you come and the number of people that we have in camp, the bathrooms and showers will be divided into male and female restrooms. Um, and so we will make sure that that is clear at the beginning of your time at camp and that you understand which is which. 
We ask that you make sure that you always follow YPT guide uh, guidelines. So making sure that you have too deep adult leadership at all times in camp um, and that your youth are following the buddy system. Uh, it's just better for everybody in camp if we are following those, those protocols. Um, while you're at camp, we ask that you help us to maintain our camp. We've got lots of people coming through this summer and we want everyone to have a great time and be able to experience the beauty of our camp. And so we ask that you make sure that you keep all of your trash and food cleaned up. Um, you don't want any animals coming in. We may not have bears at Bear Lake, um, but we do have smaller animals um, like squirrels and raccoons that would love just as much of a bear to get as a bear to get into your food. Um, make sure that we're not climbing on trees. We don't hang hammocks on trees or on the buildings. So if you want to hang a hammock, make sure to bring a hammock stand. Um, we have very minimal firewood at camp, so we ask that if you are planning on having campfires to please bring your own firewood. Um, and then for fire precautions, fire um, restrictions, it depends on how wet this spring is and how the summer goes, but that will be updated constantly at utahscouts.org slash safety. So you can get on there and check to see what the current fire restrictions are for our camp. Um, the fire, if uh, just basic information on fires, make sure that if you're leaving your campsite and if they're unattended, that they're out cold, um, and just following all fire precautions while you're in camp. We have dumpsters for your garbage at the north and south ends of camp that you're free to use. Um, and when you arrive at camp, you will be taken on a tour and shown where all of this stuff is. So for our parking, we ask that you park light. Uh, minimal parking because there is no pull-up parking to any of our campsites. So you have to walk to your campsite and carry all of your gear by hand. Um, our staff will be helping with that, but we ask that you not bring anything that is unnecessary. Um, so, and also if you want, bring wheelbarrows, um, wagons, strong youth that can carry their own stuff, um, anything that will make it easier for you to carry your gear to your campsites. The gate into our parking lot is relatively small. It's about 11 feet wide and 13 feet tall. So most RVs, camper trailers don't really fit well. It's a pretty tight turn into the gate and then a small gate. Um, so if you have to bring a large trailer, please, please contact me um, and let me know and we can, we can figure out if it's gonna work or not or and if it will be able to fit. Um, and due to our limited parking space, we ask that you not bring boats into our parking area. We ask that if you're bringing a boat, please park it at the state marina at the dry dock. Um, we just don't have room at camp. At the end of the week, before, well, at the end of the three or four days that you will be staying at camp, we have all of our groups help with some cleanup chores. Um, we have the cleaning su supplies if you will provide the willing workers. Typically, it only takes 15 to 20 minutes, but it helps us to upkeep our camp, um, and it's a great service opportunity. Um, during your stay at camp, we ask that our quiet, we ask that you um, respect the quiet hours, which is 11, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., um, and lights out is at 10.30. We do that just so that everyone can get the sleep that they need and have an enjoyable time at camp. Um, and make sure to stay out of campsites that aren't your own unless you're invited in. It's each individual group's private area. Um, we have amphitheaters and pavilions and other special areas at camp that are available for reservation during your stay at camp. Those reservations will open up on May 11th which is the day of our open house that we will be having up at camp. Um, I'll be up at camp and you um, can come up that Saturday morning to visit camp, take a tour, um, ask any questions, and it will also be a time to reserve those special areas if you want them for your group during the week. Um, at camp, we have two different food options. We have a bring your own food, which is bring everything that you need, utensils, plates, cups, um, all of your food, keeping it cold, bringing all of your cooking equipment, and you do that in your campsite. Or we have a dining hall option. Um, the menus will be available um, soon on the utahscouts.org slash hunt website. 
And if you will be eating in the dining hall and someone in your group has special dietary needs, please have that participant's parents um, or that participant go to the utahscouts.org slash allergy at least two weeks prior to arriving at camp and submit an allergy form. And our cook will contact um, the participants' parents and get details to make sure that we're able to accommodate them. Um, if we are not notified at least two weeks in advance, there's a possibility that we may not be able to accommodate for those needs. So please make sure that you are filling those forms out. And if we are unable to accommodate for any reason, we'll let them know and ask them to provide their own food. That circumstance is rare, um, but we will let you know. And then, so those are the two options for our food. And we ask that you have that decision made at least two weeks prior to coming to camp. Um, and that you put in your food order and your payment at least two weeks prior so that we have time to order our food and prepare um, what we're gonna need. Um, on Wednesday, we ask that the groups provide their own sack lunches or lunch of some kind. The first meal that will be served is dinner. So however you wanna prepare for that, um, the first meal, if you're eating in dining hall will be dinner on Wednesday. Um, as for our activities during your stay at camp, we have a, an activity rotation throughout the day in the afternoons. Um, and there's a bunch, we have several different activities, lawn games, archery. Um, we have war, large 18-person um, warrior canoes. Um, and then down on the waterfront, we have swimming and canoeing, kayaking, paddle boarding, um, and you will be given your rotation assignments when you arrive at camp. Uh, if you have a four day program, you will need two rotate, you will have two rotations that are free time where you can plan your own activities. Um, and um, you will be able to fill that time with whatever you want to do. And we can help find a spot in camp where you're able to do that activity and we'll work that out when you arrive at camp. And during that time, we ask that each group be responsible for their own youth, that they're not joining into other groups' activities uninvited. We encourage groups to do activities together, but if it is not invited, um, please leave everyone to their own activities. Uh, we really encourage all of the adults to participate in all of the activities um, at least be close and help supervise. It's really great for the youth to have the adults participating. Um, if you want more water time than the rotations offer during the week, which is not uncommon, um, there are local public beaches that you can use. You can, they are out of camp, um, but you are free to leave and use those beaches if you want. And during, in between each rotation, you'll notice that we have a half an hour break um, for you and for our staff, that allows our staff to um, get out of the sun, especially our waterfront staff, to hydrate, apply sunscreen if needed. It allows you to do the same. Um, and we just have that throughout the day. In case of lightning or other inclement weather, um, we will not be able to allow the youth in the water. It's a policy of our camp. Um, and we know that it might be disappointing, uh, but we do the best that we can to get you back in the water as soon as possible and to make the time out of the water as enjoyable as possible. Um, the, weather, the weather can be crazy up at, up at camp, so just make sure that you are prepared for that, um, prepared for rain and prepared to have activities to do during that time. Um, the waterfront, we also have two camp-wide activities during your stay. We have Waterfront Olympics and Washakie Games. That's for all campers, adults, youth. Um, we encourage everyone to participate. And the Waterfront Olympics will be an individual and group competitions. We have paddleless canoe races, paper airplane competitions, um, caber toss, sand creations, tug of war, all kinds of stuff. Um, it's, very, it's a lot of fun for the youth um, and the adults if they get into it. Uh, and then after dinner, 
in our schedule, we have free time for you and your groups to plan activity activities that you guys want to do. Our staff will be happy to help. Um, and we do the best that we can to help you accomplish whatever you might want to do. So just let us know. But we give you that time to plan and have activities for your own groups. Um, our camp fees, 50% of the camp fee is due on April 30th. And then our the final payment um, for your stay is due two weeks before you arrive at camp. So make sure that you get that done. 50% is due on April 30th. Final payment um, is at your arrival at camp. For we do have a trading post at camp that we encourage you to use. We've got lots of good stuff there. Um, there are no program costs once you arrive at camp, but we do have snacks, souvenirs, sodas, um, hats and shirts. We have ice cream. We've got lots of different stuff in the trading post. We have ice as well if it's needed for those of you who will be um, providing your own food. We have ice if you need to fill up your um, coolers. But that is all the information for right now. Uh, I'm super excited to have all of you coming up to camp to meet you all and to have such a fun summer. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email is nkhansen91 at gmail.com. And um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. If you have any other questions, check the, check the leader's guide um, on the camp's website.